How's it going, Rocker Industries Street's Magazine? We're still at NAMM 2015 today, and we're here with Audi. How's it going? Uh, well, enjoying the NAMM show exhibits. Everything is great. People are here. Actually, we're, yeah, we're going to start working on new songs for the new record in February. For this year or for next year? For this year. This year. You have a possible date? I can't say. Probably after summer. Uh, I'm sponsored by Drum Workshop, the Zildjian Cymbals, Aquarian Drum Heads, Bickford Drumsticks, Latin Percussion, uh, JH Audio, SKB Cases. Uh, that's you name it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can also for the fans, for the people out there, uh, who were your inspirations growing up? What 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 called you to? What was the calling for you to begin playing drums? Well, half the people I'm going to talk to you right now don't know who this is. Ringo Starr for the Beatles, because you know the thing about Kanye West. He did a thing with Paul McCartney, and people are going, "Oh yeah, Kanye's going to help this guy's career." <laughs> it's like, "Hello." <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, I was influenced by the Beatles. I grew up uh, on Hendrix, Grand Funk, uh, Cream, you know, uh, bands like that from the 70s, pretty much, yeah. Was there a specific song that you one day just caught your attention and you said, I want to I wanna play, that's what I want to well, do? <laughs> when I was a kid, to play the drum solo in it got a Davida by Iron Maiden, I mean, I'm sorry, Iron Butterfly, <laughs> not Iron Maiden. <laughs> See, there was another Iron before the Maidens, okay? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Iron Butterfly. It was called Inagata De Vida. It was like 24 minutes long. It was a huge drum solo in it. And I learned it all when I was 13. You know, but that's, well, I don't know if that's a big accomplishment at that age, but yeah, that's what happened. That was your calling at that age? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Did you start with the pots and pans and the... Oh, yeah. Actually, in my backyard, I had two broomstick handles with two garbage can lids with nails on them, a big giant cardboard box with a kick drum, I had some bongos and some other pieces of cardboard boxes in a ray of the drum set. <laughs> awesome. That was your first set? Yeah, it was my first set. Sponsored by Mom's Kitchen? Sponsored by, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a little city called Rosemead in California. We have Michael with us today. How's it going, Michael? It's going great. It's the uh, first booth I stopped at. What brings you to NAM? I mean, obviously, the, the, other than the obvious. Do you have anything going on specifically? Uh, on Saturday, we have a performance with Great White at the House of Blues, and uh, it should be awesome. Audi was telling me that you guys had that show. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, be. looking forward to that. He was telling us about the dates and all that. So, t can you tell us, uh, share with us a little bit about the, the brands that sponsor you? What brands do you play? Well, you know, one of the big ones is Golden Guitars. Uh, they're a uh, acoustic guitar company out of uh, Montreal, uh, up in Canada. Uh, they have outfitted the entire band with guitars. And obviously, bases for Scott. Uh, they've been great to us. Scott's got uh, Schechter bases. Uh, Audie's got you know Zildjian cymbals and DW drums. Uh, and he was also sharing with us that his first sponsor was Mom's Kitchen. He had all the pots and pans. And <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> How about you? Did, what was your first instrument? My first instrument was guitar, and I remember getting one uh, that my folks bought from Kmart. And it was a guitar and amp combination. It had four pickups on it. And it just looked ridiculous now that I look back at pictures of it. Did you have it by any chance? Uh, no, but somebody bought me a um, that year of that guitar. They found it on eBay and bought it for me. Uh, so it's pretty cool that I still have at least the same type of guitar as that. Uh, that was great. And then uh, my dad somehow won a piano in some sales contest for his work. So it was at the house, so I just thought, oh, I could learn this. So that's kind of how it's been with instruments with me. If I get it in front of me, you just got to try it. I can focus and try it and see if it works for me. And so far, there's been none that have put me back, you know, so. Is there an instrument that you would like to try? You've never really had a chance to sit down and, and try to play? Uh, one of the ones I've been looking at this year is a pedal steel guitar. I, I've always wanted to try the cello. I don't know. Well, that too, the whole the whole uh, string instrument thing that way. Since I play mandolin, I know the fretting. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, if I can just get past that first six months of e e e e e e. You're gonna incorporate that for the future shows. Yeah, maybe. You know, <laughs> right? Know. For the new album. You never know. You never know. Hey, how's it going, monkey? What can you tell us about today, <laughs> huh? Yeah, it's going all right. It's uh, chaotic in here as usual with this uh, cacophony of sound, but. Uh, coming from all directions, but yeah, it's a lot of fun, you know. And today, as you can see, we have 
the addicts in our latest issue. Hey, what do you guys have going on these days? Um, well, we're taking a little break now, but we're working on stuff for the rest of the year. So uh, uh, in May, we're going to um, be hitting Europe for some festivals. Um, also back in uh, in August in Europe and um, probably touring the U.S. in September. The Addicts shows are known for being very spectacular. Who comes up with these ideas? Uh, that's all me. It's all you. Uh, with some help from the others, but yeah, it's all come from comes from my uh, crazy imagination. What's the craziest thing you've thought of and haven't done? What do you want to do to incorporate to a show? Oh, uh, what would you like to do? I like to fly. Like suspended in the air above the crowd? Yeah, on a wire, like Peter Pan or something, you know. <laughs> Today we are still here at NAMM, uh, what is it, day number two? Uh, day three for me, we're at uh, our booth, Rocker Industries Magazine, and we're here today with Sam Ridley. Uh, my name's Matt, I play guitar in the bin. My name's Paul, lead vocal. David, guitar. Hey, what are you guys up to? Uh, just enjoying NAMM, loving California, getting some stuff done, trying to talk to some vendors, doing great interviews with you guys. Alright, uh, it actually started with me, uh, went through a lot of hard stuff, I used to just be a guitar player. Uh, lost my dad, went through a terrible divorce. Playing guitar just wasn't cutting anymore. I started singing. Uh, didn't really have a band put together, so I started to work with Matt over here. He's the owner of a studio in Michigan called 37 Studios. He helped produce my album, did the drums on it, and then later eventually became a permanent band, started pulling members together. Right on, and so how long ago did you guys establish this band? It's probably been about two years in the making that we've been doing this. Um, just kind of different incantations, and now we're starting to figure out what the overall sound is of the band with the, with the, with the members that we have now, so it's, it's taken a good shape. Uh, we've actually been through a lot of members. Um, apparently a lot of people are afraid to go on tour, so <laughs> obviously you can't take them with you. But uh, me and Matt are original members. Um, Dave's our second guitarist, but he's our permanent guitarist. We've been through, it's like Spinal Tap, we've been through like <laughs> nine drummers. And, uh, so what about your influences growing up? What were the bands you listened to? Oh, man. It's a, it's a, a lot of influences of mine come from the 90s, like Pantera, you know, Mudvayne, all types of like Seattle scene stuff, like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Temple of the Dog, you know, just a lot of stuff like that, and a lot of real early power metal stuff, you know. Right on. How about you, Matt? Oh man, I'm in. I'm in everything from Jimmy World to Mashuga, from Deftones to Aphex Twin. So like. We bring in a lot of different elements, but the, the basis of the band ends up being very heavy, like just uh, true heavy music without real boundaries. How about yourself? Lots of punk, thrash, metal, anything heavy, hard, you know. <laughs> Have you guys crossed paths with any of your influences here in them? Any of the uh, musicians' influences? Oh, absolutely. We saw the guitar player from Guar over here in the, in the Mooger Fooger uh, bass. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Here you go. We have a video available online uh, for our song, Who I Am, off the first album. It's live concert footage from uh, a couple tours that we did. Is it, is it a, do you guys have a studio, uh, I mean an EP or an LP, what do you guys have going on? Uh, we got a full length right now. Let's show it, yeah, let's show it off. It's called Fool or a King, and it's available on iTunes, Amazon, anywhere you can get it digitally. And uh, it was done actually by Matt Dalton at 37 Studios. Where are you guys oh, on yeah, social media? Uh, St. Ridley Music on Facebook, that's our page. Um, we got a YouTube channel, St. Ridley Official. All over the place, we got a new website coming up at stridley.com. All over the place. What are the plans for the immediate future? What do you guys have going on other than the tour that you guys are starting? I'm not allowed to say, but we have a really huge tour opportunity coming up. Also, maybe a few things in Europe coming up. We're definitely on the up and up doing bigger and better things at all times. I've heard that you guys have had some appearances in other magazines and other publications. Oh, so. absolutely, absolutely. We did uh, Revolver Magazine, uh, Alternative Press, Rock This Magazine, uh, Hollywood uh, Rock Review. Uh, Hollywood Music Magazine. Hollywood Music Magazine, excuse me. Uh, we're all about our live shows, so come out and see us. You can see the fans are getting ready and they're excited. Nita, Chuck, Brian, and Mike. And they're getting ready to sign the autographs. We'll be right back. Hey, we are at the Korg, Vox, and Black Star Amplification booth. So what's going on? I know you guys are busy. Have a busy day today, right? Everything's killer, dude. We're here just, uh, you know, hanging out and signing some autographs, meeting some people. It's cool, brother. Thank you. Killer presence. Is this considered a, a, a like a break from tour? This, there's, 
What's a break? <laughs> What's a day off? You guys been so busy with this no last tour, and it's just yeah. kidding. Uh, Van Kidder. Rockin', rockin's our business, and business is good, baby. Business is good, baby. <laughs> Nita, I just saw you uh, last Wednesday at, at the show. Oh, it was the good. memorial for the, the, on the Tuesday. Static yeah. Benefit. Yes. Yeah. It was. You know, it was a really incredible thing. You know, to see so many musicians come together to honor Wayne, you know, honor his family. You know, Tara was there, and I was really privileged to be a part of it. <laughs> current current side current side projects. Yeah. You guys want to share anything really quick? Yeah. We'll do that. Bisto Blanco. You can check out Bisto Blanco at LiveFastDieLoud.com. That's my band. We're on tour this March, and we tour throughout the United States and uh, Europe. We did a couple dates last year, and uh, that and Alice Cooper. I know you guys are being busy with that, right? Yes, well, thank you very much, Rock and Industries Magazine again. Chuck, Anita, rock on. Thank you. So Philip just received an amazing guitar from Jason Hook from Five Finger Death Punch, and uh, Philip is sharing with us that he's a straightforward uh, Les Paul guy. So are you going to return? I'll take care of it for you. No, 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 I'm good. It's a cool guitar. It's you play guitar, actually. I do play guitar. And you were sharing outside that you had an incident with um, when you came back from tour, right? And then you had to sol sell your guitars. Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, when I got out, I wasn't quite prepared for retirement early. Uh, after 16 and a half years, uh, you know, I was just to the point where I, I was all used up. Um, it's not common for this to happen, uh, but I just wasn't ready. So when it came down to paying bills, it was my Les Paul, my Strat, and, you know, every, every cool amp I ever had, they all just disappeared. You know, 10 grand worth of stuff for about $3,000 I sold. Um, what are you going to do? It's just things, right? It's one of those things. Well, thank you, Gibson, for uh, helping our heroes. Thank you, Philip, for serving the country. Thanks. And it's a great thing that just happened. Five Finger Death Punch. Thank you very much, Jason Hook, for hooking in. Yeah, that's Philip, cool, cool shit. So. With his guitar. Awesome. <laughs> oh, we're just excited to be at NAMM for another year. We just finished up the second EP, and uh, we had a new addition to our band, Mr. Eddie. Awesome. Welcome. So, Eddie, tell us, how have they, uh, have they treated you well? So far, yeah. Let us know, or else we can just... I can get rid of any one of them. <laughs> That's nice to know. We'll talk later. Yeah, talk. Get my number. <laughs> Rob, how you doing, bro? I'm doing good, brother. How you doing, man? What's going on? Rob, Rob does the guitar, uh, drums. Eddie, you're filling in on guitars now? Yes, sir. And Tiana is our vocalist for Varna. And I'm good for nothing. I don't know what I'm going to be doing in Varna. <laughs> so uh, what, what brings you? Do you guys have any... Uh, tell us about your sponsors. Tell us about your sponsors, what's going on. Uh, do you have any dates coming up? Oh, yeah. Sponsored by Cold Cock Whiskey, so they've been really great to us. We're gonna go to their party on Saturday, and we've just been running to old friends all around, so it's really fun for us. Not so much of a sponsor, but we ran into our old school MI. We did a whole uh, success story graduation meeting with them. All of our old teachers went straight to Cold Cock Whiskey, all the different brands, checked their guitars, every possible microphone. It's been amazing. How, Fair enough, ran into everybody, ran into you actually looking on the way down this. <laughs> how about the, uh, the uh, Hollywood Awards? How did that go? Oh, that went pretty good. Yeah. Tell us. Amazing way to start. Amazing way to start, man. We got music video of the year, and I got a female vocalist of 2014. Yay! So our Varna family is so amazing, and it's really awesome to be recognized like that, you know? <laughs> well, if you guys are maybe familiar, we posted this on Rockin' Pigs. Tiana, we took some pictures of the holiday spirit with the Santa hat and yeah, the light yeah. balls and tied up with the with the, all the lights. Yeah, we we went S and M with love with Fifty Shades of Enrique. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Christmas. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you guys for stopping by, Enrique again, Rocker Industries Net Magazine, and we're still here at Nam 2015. Peace. Woo!